Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. The recent High Republic novel, A Test of Courage, provided some insight and info on a rare lightsaber variant that we haven't seen previously in the current canon. That lightsaber variant being none other than the Light Whip. While Light Whips appeared previously in Legends, which saw several characters wield the wild lightsaber variant, such as Githany and Lumaya, they've only recently been reintroduced in the current canon. So let's take a look at everything we know about Light Whips in the current canon and discuss what makes them so freaking cool. Although first mentioned canonically in the 2016 fantasy flight game sourcebook Endless Vigil, Light Whips first appeared in canon with the release of Justina Ireland's High Republic novel A Test of Courage, which came out on January 5th, 2021. Light Whips were a heavily modified lightsaber variant with multiple plasma blades in flexible containment shields. Unlike standard single-bladed lightsabers, Light Whips' internal workings permitted the blades of the whips to be flexible, allowing dozens of small emitters to create thin and flexible blades blades, which could reach several meters in length. Due to the blade's flexibility, they required more care and concentration than a regular, single-bladed lightsaber when used, as the wielder had to pay close attention to where their whip's blade was going so as to not lose a limb, even though a light whip had less cutting power when compared to a lightsaber. Additionally, it was possible to modify a standard lightsaber to have a light whip mode with a control to switch the blade from sword to whip and back again. The High Republic era Jedi Knight, Vernestra Rowe, was able to modify her lightsaber in this way, allowing her to have an additional whip mode on her lightsaber. After learning the design from a force vision that she had one night, Vernestra altered her lightsaber so that it could change from a standard lightsaber to a light whip and back again simply by twisting the first ring on her lightsaber hilt. Roe had initially kept her light whip secret as they were typically associated with dark side users, not telling her superior at Port Haleep, Jedi Master Douglas Sunvale, nor her former master Stellan Geos about the change she made to her lightsaber. She even practiced with a whip in private. The young Jedi Knight eventually revealed the light whip to Jedi Padawan Imri Kanteros, albeit reluctantly, after they and several others became stranded on the jungle moon Weevo. According to Vernestra Rowe, testimonies from the long-dead Jedi, Servile and Canny, explain that the light whip was sometimes used to defend against the Sith Lords who used the Forbidden Forms, since light whips were effective against the Forbidden Forms of the Sith. And while the Jedi used light whips as far back as the Sith Wars, they were particularly associated with the dark side witches of Dathomir, the Night Sisters, who had adopted light whips by the High Republic era. Although Vern didn't think there was any darkness or cause for concern in the Force vision that showed her how to modify her lightsaber so that she could change it into a light whip, she's yet to reveal her modification to anyone other than Imri. Like with the double-bladed lightsabers, the Jedi definitely had an aversion to using lightsaber variants that weren't your standard standard, single-bladed lightsaber outside of the Jedi Temple Guards, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see Vernestra receive some heat from higher-ranking Jedi when she reveals her light whip. Lastly, one weapon that is often confused as light whips were Electro Whips, a similar-looking but non-lethal weapon with a retractable, electrified cable, which were sometimes called by the same name. We've seen Electro Whips appear in the Clone Wars and Rebels, primarily used by slavers, while the sourcebook Gadgets and Gears states that light whips are comparatively weaker than lightsabers, and that the thinness and limited cutting capacities allowed its wielder to use a light whip to capture or even entangle their opponents, I'm inclined to say that's not actually the case and light whips aren't able to entangle an opponent. That seems to be more of a description of an electro whip since we've seen electro whips used in this way in both the Clone Wars and Rebels. But there you have it. That's everything we know about light whips in the current canon. One of the biggest differences between the light whips we saw in Legends, as opposed to canon is their construction. In Legends, light whips were constructed in such a way that the whip contained many small kyber crystals embedded within a metallic rope, giving the whip a physical form. In canon, that doesn't seem to be the case. Vernestra Rowe's lightsaber had a single kyber crystal and her hilt was modified so that her blade emitter could emit either a standard, single blade, or could become a light whip with a twisting of a ring on her saber's hilt. As we continue further into the phases of the High Republic and more stories that feature Vernestra Rowe, 
show are released. I'm hopeful we'll learn more about Light Whips. Vernestra and Imri Canteros recently appeared in Kevin Scott's High Republic comic series, and both characters will appear in Justina Ireland's upcoming High Republic novel, Out of the Shadows, so I think it's safe to assume we'll get to see Vern wield her Light Whip again. At the very least, I was super excited that Justina Ireland included a Light Whip in a test of courage and hope we continue to get more unique and wild lightsaber variants to appear in the current canon. But what do you guys think about Light Whips? Were you excited about its inclusion in a test of courage? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.